Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 4th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Now, we always appreciate if readers send us malicious documents. The latest that Didier today looked at was sent in by our reader, Mike, and it actually included a pretty neat sort of technique how the malicious code was hidden in this document. Now, regardless of this, it was kind of obvious that the document was malicious. It had macros in it. It used the auto open method. So code would start as you open the document but the actual malicious code was not obvious and wasn't part of the Visual Basic script that was included in this document. Instead, the script actually looked at the text part of the document and that's where the malicious code was hiding. It then extracted the code out of the document and executed it. Now, Didier explains as part of his diary how to use his favorite tool, Oli Dump, in order to analyze documents like this and then again extract the malicious code for analysis. The US CERT today released some extensive details regarding the SamSam ransomware. Now, SamSam isn't new, but given this high publicity release, it's probably something that you may see coming up this week in your office. So I want to talk a little bit about SamSam. SamSam came out, I think about a year or so ago is when I sort of first noticed it and it's ransomware, but it's different from most ransomware. Normal ransomware arrives typically with a client side exploit. So that's your typical malicious document and such like the one that I talked about in the beginning of this podcast. While SamSam is really more targeted, it targets specific organizations. It usually takes advantage of vulnerabilities in servers in order to gain a foothold, then escalates privileges, and then of course starts encrypting data. The probably most high profile case that uh, I can just come up with was the city of Atlanta a few months ago. So since this is more targeted ransomware, there aren't really a lot of samples out there that you could easily get a hold of and then analyze. So what US CERT did in this latest release is to actually publish the analysis results for a few of the SamSam samples that they came across. So that should help you to protect your network from this particular threat. And talking about vulnerabilities in servers, the Kubernetes project did release a patch that fixes a privilege escalation vulnerability. Nothing super major, I would say, but it's certainly one of those vulnerabilities that a hacker may take advantage of if they got a foothold in your network. And looks like a fairly interesting sort of social engineering exploit made it into Apple's iOS App Store. The problem here is a fitness application. The fitness application tracks, well, your fitness activity, like most of these applications do, and it claims it needs your fingerprint in order to protect your data. But what is not explained to the user is that when the application is asking the user to place their finger on the home button, well, it will actually trigger a payment, and in this case, a payment for $99.99. $99.99. This application was discovered and written up by Lucas Stefanko with ESET and he also goes over some of the methods you can use to protect yourself from applications like this. For example, there is a feature in iOS to require a double click on a site button in order to approve a payment. I believe this is also the default if your iPhone or iOS device is more recent and doesn't have a fingerprint sensor but instead uses the face ID camera. In this case there's also a message overlaid on the screen that notifies you that by double clicking the side button you will approve a payment to make this particular exploit less likely to succeed. Well and this is it for today so thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.